Hello, everybody. I think it's more or less time to start. Uh, so I'm uh, Mike uh, Rappaport. I'm working for IBM Research. And uh, actually, I'm presenting uh, the work that uh, the other person did. It's uh, Kalman, who actually worked on this project, uh, but he couldn't arrive, so I kind of volunteered to present. Uh, I'll be talking about implementation uh, approach for zero copy receive for virtual I.O. Uh, so, in general, uh, in any case, when you're more generalized, you're usually more slow. So what happens with I.O. in particular in virtual I.O.? Uh, as as you move away from uh, bare metal, you get uh, lower speeds. With the uh, emulated devices like E1000 being the slowest uh, possible implementation for virtual networking, and uh, having a direct device assignment uh, much closer to hardware, but uh, in this case you lose uh, lots of flexibility. And uh, para virtual I.O. and the KVM implementation virtual in, in particular is somewhere between the emulated device and the uh, direct device assignment. So we, we are hoping to somehow bridge the gap between the uh, direct device assignment and uh, para virtual I.O. Uh, by extending the zero copy parts in virtual I.O. like TX is already available uh, so we are hoping to succeed with uh, zero copy RX as well. In this way, reduce the uh, amount of, of overhead that uh, Paravirtual I introduces. Uh, why, why we just, why we started this project? Uh, <coughs> well, obviously, if you don't copy, is uh, much better than if you do copy. So even if we don't get much improvement in throughput, we will be, will be able to reduce CPU cycles. Uh, the zero copy implementation in virtual wire is half complete because we only have uh, TX part and we don't, don't, don't uh, know how to do RX yet. And uh, for us as research, it was a challenging project. Uh, nobody tried to implement it for more than seven years uh, since the last attempt was made. So we kind of jumped on it. And uh, just uh, as an example, for it was uh, taken on actual uh, machine. It's worth showing that uh, for packets larger than uh, 1K, for instance, most of the time spent on the RIGS part, on the RIGS pass for virtual I.O. is a uh, copy to user, actually. That's happened between the top device and QMB. So why TX is long time there and the uh, RX is not yet? Uh, there are several things. Uh, first of all, uh, for, for the TX side, uh, when guest pushes uh, the packet data to the host, somewhere at the level of TAP or MAC VIT of devices SKB is created and from there network it networking core will manage to deliver the packet to the appropriate hardware device and uh, so on to the actual network. Uh, the memory part is pre-allocated and it's known at the time uh, the transmission of SKB starts and you can easily pin it. There still no problems with unpinning it, but uh, as of now I think uh, just two or three weeks ago uh, there was a patch that uh, has a way that resolves the problem with the uh, head of line blocking by falling back to the copy mode for zero copy TX. For the RX part, uh, when the packet arrives, the hardware NIC driver doesn't know how it should be routed up the stack. So you need some way to distinguish the packets that come to a particular virtual NIC. So they will be available only to that particular virtual NIC. And the rest of the packets will, will use some other flows uh, in that way or another. 
Another problem is that you need the memory to DMA there. So it should be the memory that will be visible to the guest and you either have to DMA to normal memory, normal pages allocated by the hardware driver and then somehow remap that memory into the guest. Or the other way around, which actually what we prefer to do, is to pin the guest Rx buffers and uh, make the hardware t Rx descriptors point to those buffers. And yeah, it still doesn't exist. So some overview of how a packet uh, moves up along the stack uh, for the virtual I.O. case. Uh, after it's DMA, after it's <coughs> is DMA to the host memory allocated by the Ethernet adapter driver. Then in some way, depending on your networking configuration, SDN, etc., etc., it gets into TAP or MAP VITA driver and uh, this coordination with vhost it's transferred to the Virtual ring uh, that is uh, shared by the kernel and the guest. And at the guest side, Virtio net driver receives uh, the da data, and uh, then uh, the guest networking state operates on the data on the data that was received. So in our approach, we made several assumptions that. Uh, seems to us uh, as uh, valid. First of all, more than uh, high-speed uh, NICs uh, have a lot of queues, lot of queues and uh, it should be possible to associate a hardware queue with a, a virtual uh, networking device. And the second assumption we've made is that allocation is done by guest and uh, the host only needs to pin a receive buffer uh, in memory so they won't be swapped away or something like that. And then, uh, uh, and then we can just uh, use uh, the host Rx ring to point to the buffers that were pre-allocated by the guest. And uh, since there is a, there should be some one-to-one -one coupling between a virtual NIC and physical queue. We restrict our implementation currently only to MAC Vita. And uh, frankly, we don't know how to support generic tab devices for now. So the idea is uh, that when guests allocate the buffers, uh, the, those buffers are pushed down the stack to the Ethernet adapter driver and the Ethernet adapter driver makes sure that uh, the its uh, Rx uh, descriptor rings point to those buffers. So then uh, when the packet arrives it will be DMA directly to the guest and then guest will be notified with uh, uh, through the view tiring that uh, there is new data to process. So the, the buffers actually go through relatively long way until they, they reach uh, actual guest, uh, actual need driver. It goes like Virtio, Mac Vita, Mac VLAN, and only then we can uh, somehow have access to net device structure of the actual NIC. So what we do, we create uh, some filtering rules in the uh, hardware NIC driver to isolate set of queues in order to create one-to-one -on -one correspondence between queue, uh, physical queue and uh, virtual networking device. We clear the Rx descriptoring that was initially created with the normal, let's say, driver uh, path and we drop the buffers that were pre-allocated for drivers Rx. So we can then push our guest allocated buffers to that uh, NIC driver. 
Okay. On the memory allocation part, we assume, again, as we assume that guest allocates all the buffers, uh, there is a There is a routine in the Tiny driver that it, there are actually several uh, that allocate uh, memory for our X part. We needed to extend and that yet another allocation routine because uh, we needed uh, 4K aligned, uh, 4K page aligned buffers, and uh, what Utah does now is uh, unaligned uh, buffer of Ethernet frame size. Uh, then, after the buffers are allocated and the guitar rings point to them, at the vhost part, we transfer, we, we translate the virtual descriptors to SKB that will point to the same buffers and push that SKB down to the physical driver. And in the physical driver, so when we, when it, when its method for pushing SKBs is called, the RX, uh, RX uh, descriptoring is uh, reinitialized to properly set up the pointers. When the packet arrives, uh, it is made directly to the guest buffers because uh, we set up the RX descriptoring and the third step. The SKB, uh, as usually SKB is created and updated uh, and uh, set up with proper pointers. And uh, then we call a uh, normal uh, native RX or its derivatives uh, to push the SKB further up the step. Eventually, uh, SKB arrives to Mark Vita and uh, then in the Mark Vitab's handler X frame, we queen SKB as, a, as ready for the user space for, for further processing in vhost, and uh, notify vhost about the uh, arrival of the new data. vhost translates the uh, SKB pointers to, uh, to the entire ring descriptors and uh, again kicks again mark vita so that mark vita read will be able to transfer the buffers further to tmu and eventually to virtanet the transients again we've made a bit of api changes inside the kernel to implement this uh, mechanism so what we are currently using, uh, we have a method for net device uh, that uh, performs the initial setup of the network driver. Uh, we called it NDO set zero copy RX. It's pretty much similar to uh, the existing method uh, that uh, initializes L2 of loading. I think it's uh, NDO L2 DWFW something. Uh, so the purpose of this method is to allow implementers of hardware drivers to reset their RX ring and uh, to set up uh, receive side steering uh, to create correspondence between the hardware queue to virtual NIC, which is in this case would be represented by uh, MacVita MacVillan uh, device, which is VDF here. And we've added another method to net, de net device struct is post RX buffers, which actually called on the memory allocation path. And uh, when Virtai allocates uh, memory, this method allows us to push all the memory down to the hardware device driver. For Mark Vitap, it was kind of experimental. We have added two control messages uh, that. Uh, that we are using. One is uh, for posting the buffers uh, on the allocation path so that uh, vhostnet can send uh, these, uh, these control messages to MacVita that it will, <coughs> will be able to, to push the buffers down the step. And uh, 
we've added a flag a message copy is a message zero copy rx that indicates that a current packet should be zero copied and uh, there is no no need to call for copy for you, call copy to user in order to transfer it to the user space and for the virtual net we needed to add a routine that allocates 4k page line buffers uh, so the memory will be dmable uh, and uh, probably uh, we can just uh, we can just extend existing uh, allocation methods in their virtual net we'll see in the future the issues we've identified during the implementation which is actually not yet complete uh, uh, that to implement zero copy RX for virtual IO you'll need to patch each and every hardware device driver because uh, like Intel drivers allocate memory in their way and Mellanox drivers do it in another way and the Broadcom does it in a third way and uh, there is no unified mechanism for allocating a uh, receive side memory in the networking stack there was a project uh, I th from Red Hat a while ago that we're trying to implement page pool mechanism uh, for allocating uh, page pools for networking device drivers and then converting all the networking device drivers to use the page pool. Maybe we can, uh, if when it will be implemented, we can use the same mechanism and just provide a different backend for the page pool implementation in the PCOS. The next question is, um, what should we do when the, the buffers that were allocated to the guest side are already finished and the, the, there are still new packets coming into the, from the network? <coughs> so there are, we see at least two possibilities. One is just drop, and another possibility is the implementation of some fallback mechanism to the copy method. But that creates another complexity because of uh, ordering between the uh, ordering inside the entire ring uh, for packets that were there is zero copied and they were copied uh, using the normal copy, and uh, we don't know yet how to tackle that. Another problem we've seen is uh, pretty much related to 4K is that we had to turn on GRO for initial implementation because uh, with GRO packets, okay, data lives at some offsets relatively to the beginning of the page. And the entire ring at the moment cannot handle such thing. It presumes that all the segment data is, uh, is continuous in memory and just pointed by different descriptors. So there should be some uh, mechanisms that allows extend the entire protocol to handle uh, something like uh, page offset of uh, fragment in SKB. And uh, ag again, allocation of 4K or page size buffers is uh, a bit wasteful, especially on architectures that uh, do not use 4K pages like uh, some ARM 64 chips and uh, power, of course. So as, as of now, the implementation is pretty much proof of concept. It progresses much slower than we expected at the beginning. So when we submitted the abstract for this talk, we really hope to show real numbers that we, well, we outperform right, by 20%. It doesn't matter. Uh, we still can't outperform anything because uh, the best we can do is uh, up to one second of uh, live network session, and then uh, just everything crashes. So. <laughs> It's uh, it's work in progress. Uh, we hope to finish it uh, some uh, sometime soon, and then we're starting to see how we're going to upstream all the whole thing. And uh, I believe that's all more or less. Questions? How long, how long, has, this, how long has this effort been ongoing, actually? How long does it what? How long has this effort from your side been ongoing? Uh, we've been talking about it for like a year and a half, but uh, we started 
we really started to work on it uh, at the end of spring. <coughs> Steven. Uh, most of the network drivers are switching away from allocating an SKB and allocating a page and building the SKB later when the packet is received. And that is because the effort to build the SKB is significant. Um, to create the metadata is significant. You might be able to figure out a way to use the hooks, especially the XDP hooks, to get to the data before. Um, and then you would have a generic hook all the drivers that support XPP without having to... Uh, uh, yeah, we considered having SKB, but I'm not really an expert, neither we, we are tied on no networking, but I've talked with Jasper, and he said that most probably SKB won't help, XKB, uh, XDP it's won't XD, help. Not XDP itself, but the hooks of where <coughs> the stack, the stack uh, might be... The, the, problem, the problem is that XDP <coughs> will run after you DMA. <coughs> What I meant was you'd run the XDB hook, and it would decide whether to let the package <coughs> drop it. And yeah. then you'd run another hook that says, oh, and now I want to do something and put it in back VLAN or something. Yeah, but they're also talking about allowing uh, XDB to uh, go to user space. Yeah. yeah. So, that's 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 so if you can push a packet server off to user space, you can push it to a VM. Yeah. So, so then yes. you'll have the, the potential mapping issues, though, but it's just rewrites, hopefully. In, ca in that case, yes. But just using the XDP hook at the Rx, early at the Rx, there is no hook that early in the Rx. Well, the other reason that the XDP might be useful is one problem with the default zero copy Rx is you lose your ability to set policy about what that VM should be able to receive. And if you had the XDP hook, you could say, uh, You could set the yeah, policy, you, you right? you could set the policy there saying, I only wanted to talk to this whitelist or not this blacklist, and you would kill those packets before. Now, there's a certain security race in the terms of check before free. Uh, that doesn't help, because the, the guest has already got the data. So well, no, but you, 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 if it's a, it, it, you there's two the kinds of security. Time. One is the guest, the guest should never see it. The other one is we're trying to protect the guest from getting DOS attacked, and we only want it to talk to, to, to be able to receive data from certain people. So for the second case where it should only be talking to this other person, I, this other machine. I don't need to, to wake it up and get the data. You can recycle the data in the host side. Uh, yeah. Stefan, probably we can do some merge between the two approaches right. and do the allocation at guest and propagate all the memory down the stack right. and then to run some XKB hooks in the very beginning of the right. processing. But still, the, the, the DMA goes to directly to the guest memory, but you can clear it if XDP hook says no. But More questions? So, where is your, is your source code anywhere posted? Can you repeat, please? Wow. Source code, where is it? <laughs> At IBM. <laughs> uh, we need to, well, since we need to do all the legal stuff before pushing it to, uh, to the public, we prefer first to finish what we have uh, and don't do it twice. But you may have to do it twice based on upstream review, though. Uh, probably, but uh, we hope uh, that at that stage we can kind of avoid the second legal review. Okay. Thank you. More questions? <coughs> Thank you, everybody.